You know what? I don't know how old I was before I realized that there was more than one Sugar Hill movie that starred black people. Because anytime anybody mentioned a Sugar Hill, I automatically went to Ricky Thick, my baby. Woo! Th that's where I went every single time. <laughs> There is an entirely different movie, a Diane Sugar Hill movie to be exact, and she is kicking ass and taking names. guys welcome back to my channel it's tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss sugar hill now this movie is from 1974 and it stars marky bay now before we get into all things voodoo i need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video i'm going to give you guys a moment to do that then we're going to come back and discuss don't you miss those good old black exploitation movies where you could hear words thrown around like whitey honky cracker <laughs> absolutely good times Go back, back, back. Now that you guys have hopefully subscribed to see more of me, let's get into this movie. But before we jump into the video, I have to give a shout out to the person who paid for it and requested it. So if you happen to summon some slave zombies to seek out your revenge, it's not because of me. It's because of this person right here. Thank you so much for supporting me and paying for this content. Now this movie was directed by Paul Maslansky, who is mostly known for his producing, producing movies all the way from the 60s of multiple genres. But on the horror side, Castle of the Living Dead, The She Beast, Race with the Devil, and Deathline. Most notably producing every single Police Academy film. However, this is the one and only movie he ever directed. Now in my other reviews of black exploitation horrors like JD's Revenge, Scream Blackula Scream, check those out if you haven't yet to do so. I not only speak on the history of horror and black exploitation films or how much I love the movies, I also speak on immensely talented actors like William Marshall not really being given a fair shot and being seen more often outside of this genre and just giving jobs period. There were some really good acting performances here, especially Don Pedro Cali who portrays Baron Samadhi. But outside of a few other film roles, it looks like he as well as the beautiful Marky Bay were pretty much relegated to small television roles or smaller bit parts in movies, which is just absolutely unfortunate. Because first of all, Marky is too damn fine to not have played the lead in many a roles. Did you see her? Did you see how beautiful she was? Like, it was really like vintage Nicole Ari Parker vibes, but she is just absolutely drop dead gorgeous. I remember the first time I ever checked out this movie, it wasn't because I was interested in it at all. I just happened to have seen a picture of her and was like, is this the only movie she was in? <laughs> Why didn't I see her, you know, in the same light that I maybe saw uh, Pam Greer? Like it was all there. I watched the movie because she was on the cover. So to see that she retired to be happily married, run a cruise ship and collect stamps, I was like, wow, we, I felt like we missed out on so many opportunities. Not her, cause you know, live your best life, but I just wanted to see her on my screen a lot of more times. Now we open the movie with what looks to be a supernatural voodoo woman, the funkiest, grooviest voodoo ritual that you would ever want to see. When I tell you that everybody was Harlem shaking on all cylinders. <laughs> They should be though, because this isn't an authentic ritual. This is entertainment for a Haitian inspired nightclub. Owned by Diana's boyfriend, Langston. Now a happily engaged Diana lets us know right off the bat, 
she just don't want anything happening to her man. Like, Lord, I can always depend on some black exploitation for some overacting. <laughs> It took me out so many times with this movie. I just don't want anything happening to my man. Now what could happen to this man Langston that owns this light club? Absolute death, because Diana knows it's just a matter of time with mob bosses like Morgan sending his henchmen to threaten Langston into selling his club. Now I sat and looked at the lead henchman for all of two minutes straight trying to figure out why he looks so familiar. It was nasty Nathaniel from Set It Off. <laughs> you can't hide that face, nasty Nate. We know Nate, I'm in the bind anywhere. That literally can't bother to give poor Langston in his relationship with Diane a whole three minutes of screen time before they run up in the sheer pantyhose stocking and beat him to death. I was like, well, damn, I thought we would get a little bit more time. <laughs> in a while I thought I was like oh he just dies right off the back in the beginning huh I guess he should have took nasty Nathaniel's proposition we all know you ain't getting nothing to Nate's done like <laughs> the fact that his name here is fabulous like f-a-b-o-l-o-u-s a devastated Diane comes out to see the love of her life stretched out dead and never to return Diane immediately wants her revenge she needs revenge I wants revenge she wants revenge automatically now this movie has a lot of slavery undertones that i did not notice before outside of the zombies with our characters of morgan his only black henchman fabulous and his girlfriend celeste we see that morgan and his little white minions all have this old school slave mentality where he's walking around acting like a old school traditional slave master having this strong superiority complex especially against black people feeling like he can do whatever say whatever and take whatever he wants to especially from a black man like langston believe that he's simply better and Langston was beneath him. Then you get into his girlfriend Celeste who was very much so giving head mistress of the house. Always desperate for attention, trying to tend to Morgan's every need, all while spewing out these racial slurs. Very much so, look at me, see me, I'm in charge. All the while Morgan's mean ass just don't like her. Like, <laughs> like when did you meet the woman? What made you fall for her beyond, you know, her physical? Because he clearly cannot stand this woman the entirety of the movie. All the while, he has no problem most of the masters way back when finding beauty in lusting for even at times respecting Diane Sugar Hill he definitely wanted to dip his little finger all up into Diane Sugar if she would have allowed it just complimenting her 24 7 which in turn causes envy in the likes of Celeste and lastly, we have F-A-B-O-L-O-U-S. Nasty Nate here is giving house nigga. Like, we literally open with a scene of him shining Morgan shoes. Like, really? <laughs> I just love how many racial slurs that they could squeeze into one scene. This movie went out of its way to be like, do not root for or feel sorry for any of these white men. They are not deserving of it. Nigga with the hard ER is thrown around one too many times <laughs> that along with just referring to a man as a piece of black meat bananas like all kinds of terms are stuffed into this movie just for you to just pretty much basically wait for these white men to die and i was absolutely here for it but fabulous is a special case with him being pretty much the only black man in the room he is just also happy to do all of morgan's bidding be controlled meanwhile he treats you no better than he would treat any other black person off the street shining shoes saying that he's gonna make a honest nigger out of him like just a hot ass mess meanwhile we were so eager to help tear down the likes of Langston a black man who owns something himself outright now Richard Lawson is also here as Sugar's ex-cop boyfriend who is on the case he is pretty much here to reminisce 
flirt and investigate all the while sugar pretend she don't know what the hell is going on he wanted some sugar too everybody wanted some damn sugar and i did not blame anybody because this is fine however he knows deep down that she's capable of revenge if she puts her mind to it even if she's not personally dropping the bodies in the movie after a while considering the evidence and research that voodoo could be at play all the while looking for more evidence as Sugar tries to keep him off her trail. Now with Sugar wanting to personally watch every single individual involved get their comeuppance, justice in a courtroom just isn't enough. We seek out voodoo queen Mama Trash, aka jo George's mother. It's George, oh George, it's George's mother. <laughs> she is here serving up all the magic. Now though Zara Cully did a really good job, they could have did better with that little wig, honey. I swear that wig was made out of cat hair, fell in polyester. It just looked real itchy scratchy, like it always <laughs> It always bothered me. The shifty accent and the overacting could have went somewhere too. I feel your anger. I'm just so tired. I was like, oh my God, we are dragging this scene out, ain't we? But with some cobwebs, ominous music, and them putting that goddamn fog machine to work. Boy, when I tell you it was so much fog here, <laughs> it was so much damn fog. We finally summoned Baron Samadhi, Lord of the Dead. I enjoyed his performance the most. Not that, you know, Diane and everybody else wasn't doing a good job, but I really felt like he made this movie. And not just because of all the smoke and the theatrics, the actor was delivering, but I feel like it's because the character was more so based in reality. This real life underworld entity who is the gatekeeper between the living and the dead. This mediator who has the power to bring life or death. Now, I don't know a whole lot about voodoo or the history in its culture, but I often got this character confused with Papa Legba, who's also real, especially after I saw the depiction in American Horror Stories Covenant. Oh, that season slapped. <laughs> Such a good season, but they only depicted the imagery and a lot of the antics to mirror Baron's Samadhi, even though he is said to have just simply looked like an old man. You also see Baron heavily depicted in The Princess and the Frog, you know, are you ready? No, like, oh, why you had to kill Evangeline's husband like that? Why do you kill Ray? And even though all of the depictions are just pretty much downright evil with the bad rap that Voodoo often gets, Baron does assist in other things like protection, help with fertility, blessings, good fortune. It's not just simply dark death. But like the depiction here, you do have to give an offering to summon him. He does love women, fun, alcohol, tobacco. He's a mischievous trickster, which we see a lot here. And he will come at you if you don't honor the deal. Like I just knew he was gonna take Sugar's ass. <laughs> I just knew he was going to take sugar towards the end of the film with the way that we have mama really enforce you know for this summoning for this deal what you have to sacrifice could be great and their eagerness that we get from sugar's ass to see these men murder you know she is just so instantly as soon as she meets him she's so eager to offer up her soul as if it's nothing because she wants her revenge so bad she is living her best goddamn life here in this movie he even says like oh you're you're not not afraid of me but I would be fronting if I would say that I wouldn't have lived for him to trick her ass in the end with that theatrical strong ass bold performance that he was delivering them uh making sure to adjust the height of the camera every time he is on screen to make him look like this big imposing figure which he was he was a very very tall man that along with this echo sound effect that they are putting on his voice to make it sound even stronger. I just wanted her to get got like, aha girl, you thought bring your ass on, but no, we didn't get that. However, we do get this really interesting, very long and cinematic scene of the slave zombie army awakening from their graves. Now, I remember watching this movie for the first time. I thought the way that these zombies looked was so original and innovative. We have this skull, ashy body paint, you know, rely on a black exploitation horror movie for anybody who's a vamp zombie-like entity, they're gonna be ashy. <laughs> 
but something as simple as cobwebs, there's like this sheen glitter type of material, there's dirt and these bulging chrome eyeballs. Them old so eagerly coming at you with old slave shackles as well as machetes. There are so many of them at once. I thought it was really, really strong. However, it did not originate from this movie. The look of these zombies comes from a 1932 horror film by the name of White Zombie. But I did feel like this movie elevated the look so often, especially in the zombie genre. Zombies all look the same. I'm like, y'all. <laughs> There are so many different things that we can do with zombies. Hey, Whitey, you and your punk friends killed my man. Like, get into the kills. <laughs> the fact that we have Diane Sugar Hill show up every time she is ready to catch a body in this all white, form fitting jumpsuit with red inseam in this afro just absolutely bomb. Like, girl, stop. <laughs> But the kills in the movie are really original and cool. I really love that every single individual kill has some type of different voodoo allure to it with either voodoo dolls, snakes, live burials, or something as simple as feeding a pig to pigs or severing someone's head. We also get a lot of practical effects here that weren't all that bad. Low key, a really, really simple formula. We trace, and trap, trick, torture, and kill. I really found myself enjoying the simplicity of the script. I feel like now with a lot of horror movies, especially with them calling everything elevated horror now, we are really sleeping low key on the simplicity of just ABC writing. Not saying that this is a masterpiece or anything, but they are white, they are racist, they are trying to muscle their way in on other people's businesses, taking advantage of people, and she feels like they should die. We are going to do that. Simple as that. And then we have the likes of Baron running around just being awesome. Being that trickster, reveling in the moment, chewing up the scenery, disguising himself as a bartender, construction worker, a driver, all to infiltrate their spaces before he assists in killing them. On top of that, having those zombies pop out, it's just really, really fulfilling. And then we had a whole bitch slap scene. <laughs> The scene between Celeste and Sugar fighting in the little nightclub and all the bitch slaps heard around the world, that was so goddamn fun. I ran that back three times. Ultimately ending the way we always knew it would, Sugar just being completely untouched. <laughs> the way that she went out of her way to get Valentine off of her trail, like, you know, injure him, you know, stop him, but don't kill him. Like, wow, you real shifty. <laughs> she did that I was like damn I thought that she would have some type of under cold like you know not not my friend not my ex-boyfriend we, we can't use voodoo on him like no nah, let his ass roll down the steps he messing up my plan that just really showed how devoted that she was I like was having as much fun as she was because there was absolutely no second guessing, no remorse. She was absolutely reveling in it just as much as Baron was. That's why I thought he was going to take her ass. Like, girl, you perfect. But in the end, we don't get that. Of course, we save the best for last, which is Morgan. To see him get his in the end is well deserved as well as Celeste. But if it was up to me, I would have had him leave with Sugar's ass because I felt like they were on the same time and in sharing the exact same energy. Well, you guys, that was my review for Sugar Hill. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop down and tell me if you did. Are you a fan of the Black Exploitation era? What other horror movies have you seen that you loved? And what did you think about my review for this film? I look forward to reading your comments. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff because it helps me out. Immediately after this video, I will be doing an after party live, not only discussing this movie more in depth, but discussing it with my guest, Nikki. Come on over there and discuss it and hit the like button over there as well. I see you guys next time for my next review. Bye.